Welcome to Trinity's Small Group Study, 180 degrees. We're standing next to the beach today because the story that we're looking at takes place on the shores of the Sea of Galilee from John chapter 6, beginning with Jesus feeding the 5,000. Let's start off with some sharing time. Share a time with your group about when you received a free meal and how appreciative you were to get it. first part of John chapter 6, you see Jesus on the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. A great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs that he had performed on the sick. Verse 5 says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming with him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Then in verse 12, when they had all they wanted to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. And they had many baskets full after everyone had eaten whatever. You know, this crowd was so grateful for this meal that Jesus had provided that the text goes on to say in verse 14, when they saw this miraculous sign, they said, surely this is the prophet who came into the world. Then Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. So they were so grateful for this meal that Jesus gave them. They wanted to make him king by force, but they didn't understand the true reason why Jesus was there. In order to get away from the crowd who wanted to make him king by force, Jesus actually walked on the water to the other side of the lake. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the lake, he points out to them in verse 26, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. So Jesus points out that they are following him for the wrong reasons, in order to fill their stomachs or to satisfy their own appetites. Let's take a moment in our groups and talk about how sometimes we follow Jesus for the wrong reasons as well. In verse 27, Jesus says, Do not work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life. What food do we typically work for most? The food that spoils or the food that endures to eternal life? Let's take a moment and talk about that now. crowd with Jesus still interested in getting some food. So Jesus tells them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. This sounds pretty good to the crowd, so they respond, Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and yet you still do not believe. Take a moment and talk about in your groups, what do you think Jesus means when he says, I am the bread of life? And how is that different from what the crowd is expecting to hear? John chapter six continues with verse 52. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Any, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. 
take a moment to talk about in your groups how if you heard Jesus say this, that unless you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you may have no life in you, how would you have responded if you were there to hear this for the first time? Would you have understood what he meant or would you have been confused? Let's take a moment and do that now. So it's obvious that the crowd was following Jesus for the wrong reason. And when Jesus gives them the right reason to follow him, that he is eternal life, this is how they respond in verse 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching and who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, he said, does this offend you? From this time on, many disciples turned back and no longer followed him. So they made 180 degrees away from following Jesus because they were following him for the wrong reasons. His disciples, however, especially Peter, who had given up everything to follow him, also responded to Jesus. He asked them in verse 67, Do you want to leave too? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. As we wrap up this week's Bible study, think about how the people who were following Jesus for the wrong reasons turned away from him. Yet his disciples, especially Peter, who were following him for the right reasons, because he offers eternal life and the bread of life, that Peter was willing to give up his life in order to serve God. Discuss in your groups for a moment about how God has maybe called you to serve him in ways that you don't understand but you do anyway because he has the words of eternal life.